Okay, so true story. Two nights ago, I get up from a bedroom. I don't have any shoes on, no slippers on. And I go to walk out into the hallway and I feel a crunch. And then I feel an immediate like poke. And I'm like, oh God, what did I just step on? And I look down and I have stepped on a scorpion. <sighs> Some of you guys are going to be like, did that hurt? Oh my God, burn down your house. Ah! <laughs> None of those things. I think the only thing it really hurt was my feelings. Um, I looked down, it was still kind of moving its tail, it was still kind of doing that, but it scared me more than anything. I think I have been bit harder by an ant. I'm sure I've been hit bit harder by my cat, so no. Um, I'm okay, I didn't have any weird kind of swelling or that kind of stuff, but I did actually, um, we saved the scorpion so I could show you guys what size I stepped on. So let me see if I can do this without dropping it. So yeah, it was pretty decent. It was pretty decent size. It got my attention, that's for sure. So then I thought, okay, you guys, we got included into our who ate who, our food chain conversation. Absolutely. If these guys are out right and about now, if you're going to go on any of your scorpion hunts or you want to learn about scorpions, well, who's eating a scorpion? What does a scorpion eat? I think the coolest thing about a scorpion is how they eat. So for this video, if you guys are new, so if you somehow just scrolled on by and you're like, who is this person? Well, my name is Stacy, and I am the founder of a nonprofit called the Desert Nature Alliance. And we do all kinds of education aimed at you to love the desert and just get you included in how, the, the, how it all works. So right now we've been working on the food chain, who ate who. And um, let's introduce you to, um, this is one of our, <laughs> our residents that's out here, uh, Scorpion. Now you can go, well, what does a scorpion eat? I have videos for you. You can watch a scorpion eat. It is some of the coolest stuff I've ever seen. The first time I watched a scorpion eat, I thought I had, had an out-of-body experience. I don't even know how you say that. It's not as normal as you might think. So... That's what I want us to really explore is that just because something's eating, it may not be the typical, I'm going to take it and put it straight into my mouth. And it may not come from a source that you might be aware of either. So let's have a good time with it. I also, um, okay, well, so can you, can a person eat a scorpion? Well, they put them in things like this. So I think on behalf of the one that that hurt me the other night. I think I'm gonna do it. I, I have never eaten a scorpion, um, born and raised desert, but let, let's do it. I, it. They're edible. So yes, I can I can eat a scorpion if I can get the plastic off of this. So while we're talking, I'm gonna eat my scorpion sucker and hang out with you guys. Now, for those of you that are new and maybe haven't hit that like and subscribe button, please do it. It goes a long way for YouTube and the algorithm and it would help get our channel growing a little bit. Most of the channel you're gonna find out, it's not really me, it's a lot, a lot of short videos of some really cool animal wildlife that we see and have seen out here. We have personally videoed, I've got 800 videos on the channel now of all the stuff that's going on out here, but some of them are exceptionally cool and I think they, they get missed in the whole, um, you know, they get passed by in that whole sea of videos that are out there in, in the YouTube land. So for some of you that are trying to get your points, trying to get some of our DNA gear, you are going to definitely get some points if you go back and find some of the videos that I am going to reference in this video tonight. So, uh-huh, 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 I'm going to eat me one of these. Okay, out here in the desert, yes, we have scorpions. And those the ones that I showed you is quite large here in my museum, in my private museum. I have a giant hairy scorpion and they can get even bigger. Again, I'm gonna show you or click the link that'll be attached somehow to us. Mm, this is actually really good. Um, <laughs> it's just the sugar that's on the outside of it. And it isn't in my food chain. I'm not sure if it's in my food chain. Okay. What does a scorpion eat? I've watched them eat moths. I feed them crickets. And for the most part, what you're going to see is a tail that's going to come around. It is going to sting it, sting whatever it has gotten a hold of, whether it is a moth or a cricket. And your pinchers that are in the front, it's going to grab a hold of it. It's going to, the stinger is going to help immobilize its, its, its food. 
And then these amazing little pincher things come outside of its mouth and it starts eating, 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 jumping, jumping, jumping. It, it's crazy to watch, it's amazing. Please go back and watch the videos. Now some of you out there in, in video land and YouTube land are gonna be like, Stacey, you didn't say anything technical. You didn't use any of the, the Latin names for any of this stuff. Well, no, because that's not what we're doing for these videos. These videos are to help us introduce the different groups that are out there in the wild in the food chain and then how they kind of overlap with each other. So for the last video, we talked a lot about rodents, rats, pack rats, mice, voles, that whole category, and rabbits, and then who was out there eating what, and, and, and simplified that group down, right? Now this group is actually out there at the same time as those rabbits and rats and everyone else, but it just starts becoming way too complicated if you're gonna start learning all about the food chain and everyone that's out there, if, yeah, we can't do all that in 15 minutes, right? So first video, you're gonna go back to, answer some questions, pay attention in there, get your brain going on, okay, there's this animal is eating, this animal is eating, this animal is eating, this animal. Now the ones that Stacy's getting ready to start bringing up now, where do they fit in to those other animals and where everyone else was out and crawling around or flying around or moving around. Was it safe for everyone where we now starting to see the crossover, right? And so that's where we had left on the last video. We started to see the crossover where we saw rats and snakes were now gonna be out there basically at the same time, okay? But like I said, in these categories, that's just too general. We have some amazing, really cool things that are out here in the desert that we can't go by that fast. We need to stop. We need to highlight a few of these as we go. And then maybe the next time around, we're going to highlight some different ones. So for this one, there's, if you think that I was scared of a scorpion, not really. Of all the things that we have out here that actually kind of terrify, terrify me, no, a, a scorpion really wasn't, wasn't it. Now, th there's something else out there that does something really kind of strange in our food chain that I, I want us to talk about. Its name's kind of weird. It also does something very unique in the desert that most things don't do. Now my scorpion that I stepped on, it's camouflaged. I did not see it whatsoever. It's almost clear. It's like the color of sand. And for the most part, they are. You, you really can't see them. Most of our things in the desert, even the dangerous ones like rattlesnakes, tend to have a lot of camouflage. Camouflage, for those of you that are maybe younger, newer, or, or still learning some of the language, camouflage means that you're gonna have on a color or a pattern that is gonna blend in with your environment so well, you're really, really hard to see, right? So when you have certain creatures that are out there, like I said, in this group right now, right now we're not gonna call them by anything specific, and so if you say the wrong category, that's just fine. So whether you call them creepy crawlers and spiders and, and the, all the things, fine, we're not gonna get that technical. But when you get into a group like this that really doesn't try to hide itself at all and the colors are kind of bright and it looks a little straight, those are the ones that you need to watch for, especially in the desert, and we have one that I'm guessing is rare to us or special to us. And I want you guys to put it in the comments. So if I'm wrong, if you can find these somewhere else, please let me know. But we have tarantula hawks here. Okay. Is it a tarantula that flies? It's a tarantula hawk? No. Is it a hawk that kind of looks like a tarantula and is furry and has legs? No. It's a tarantula hawk. It is this creature right here. And it is known to have a sting that is so bad, you, you do not want that to happen to you at all. <laughs> tarantula hawk. Why do they call it a tarantula hawk? Well, I gotta tell you about that. So let's put this sucker down here for a minute. Let's get us some water, drink some water, everybody. Let's talk about that really quick. In the food chain, you have certain creatures that are specialized in what they're going to eat, how they eat it, how they go about it, and how they treat it. 
and a tarantula hawk happens to be one. Now I've told you guys so many times in these videos, I am not your expert. I am your person that's going to introduce you to a lot of these amazing things in the hopes that you do go off and find out more, look them up, all those kind of things, and especially watch the videos that we have. We were able to catch in the wild a tarantula hawk doing what it does. Like, well, what does it do, Stacy? Okay, well, first off, I want you to look again. This looks like it's a big beetle is actually what is kind of in that category. Like I said, if I get that wrong, put it in the comments, okay? But we're gonna, for right now, that's what we're gonna call it. It's like this big, almost like flying ant. It more has that kind of body where it has, we're not gonna get into it, but it's brightly colored. And in the sun, there's also this iridescent kind of blue that you see. It's not trying to hide itself whatsoever. It kind of buzz on by you. And if you know that that sting is going to be bad, it's definitely not something you want to swat at or draw attention to or whatever, because it is going about its business. And where is it in that food chain? Well, it's it, it wants tarantulas. Okay, this is where it's getting its name. It also flies and it does walk and crawl around on the ground. Like I said, you can learn so much about these and I definitely want you to, and to put it in the comments, we'll be putting it in some other videos. But tarantula hawk is what you're gonna look up and you wanna see the videos that we have. Because what this creature does is once it finds itself a tarantula, this is not a, a live one, guys, don't, don't get freaked out, this is a molt, okay? So once it finds a tarantula, it, it flies around and it is able to sting it and it is literally going to drag this tarantula. Ooh, I broke a little part, you guys. Don't worry, I have, I have tons. They should. It is going to drag that tarantula back to its home and it is going to use it. It's going to put its babies on it. It's going to eat it. It's going to do all kinds of crazy to it. I want you to look up tarantula, tarantula hawk. Now out here in the desert, we have their Arizona blondes is what we have. That is not what I'm showing you right now. That is not the molt of the blonde that I have. This is just one of the, the pets that I have in the house. I do have an actual um, Arizona blonde in here that you could see what if you happen to come to the museum, some of you guys have. A little bit more information up here about tarantulas. But like I said, we're just gonna scratch the surface. This is just one, we were talking about one creature flying around waiting. Usually when it rains out here is when our tarantulas come out and you can see a little bit more, tend to find them in the wet areas. They're out kind of relocating. Their females are a little bit fluffier than the males. Again, I want you to go find people that are experts in that field. I'm not gonna give you all the information on tarantulas, but a tarantula hawk, it's not a tarantula, it's not a hawk, it's its own thing. Like I said, I want you guys to look it up, watch the videos and find out how amazing and unique this creature is and how it is moving. And it is within your food chain. Now, if in our larger food chain, if we were to say spray or put poison or to take away certain things, would that affect a creature like a tarantula hawk that you were not aware of whatsoever? Does the tarantula hawk do good or does it do bad? Did you immediately label it bad because you're like, well, I know it stings and I, I guess I like tarantulas so I don't want them to kill tarantulas. Is there a reason? Do tarantulas, is there a lot of tarantulas? Is there a lot of tarantula hawks? Are we somewhere in the middle? That's the thing that we are still working on. We're gonna continue working on as we go through our food chain of, like I said on the last video, we, we got to a point where we said, okay, rats and snakes. There seems to be a lot of both and there seems to be some kind of, I eat these, but a lot of other creatures eat me. Now we've reached a point where it's a little weird when you start getting into bugs and the creepy crawlers and all the things that might be in our area in the desert. Now, these things especially are gonna be completely different if you live someplace like, say, Florida. The climate, what is there is totally different than the desert that I have here and the creatures that we're gonna see here and who is gonna eat who in the food chain. So does your food chain change? By location, absolutely it does. By environment and by the introduction of certain animals or the absence of certain animals. Sometimes the absence or introduction of certain animals is completely human caused. In Florida, they have these very large snakes called pythons. 
and not a lot of things eat pythons. So then if the pythons keep their snakes, and if you don't know, it's a very large snake, they can grow up to like 20 some odd feet. You need to follow the people that are out there catching all the pythons. If nothing is going to eat the python, but the python's gonna keep eating, that is gonna throw off your, your system a little bit, okay? So if you have enough of something that is actually a food source and something that eats it, it keeps everybody in balance. If I take one out of there, is there going to be a break in my chain? Absolutely. So when we go to our tarantula hawks, do I wanna spray things in the air to kill those? No, I don't really wanna do that because they need to be eating something else or putting their babies on top of something else and then going from there and going from there. When I go back to my scorpions, scorpions put their babies on their back. If you're out there spraying and trying to kill a whole bunch of the scorpions, well, I, I am pretty sure that all of the things, the creatures that are eating the scorpions are now going to be poisoned too. So we need to be careful in our food chain. Back to eating my, eating my, I eat my scorpion. How we're looking at the food chain, how we're learning about it, and how we're treating the food chain. So we do have a part in it Kind of, that's what I want you to learn about. So I'm stopping at the 16 minute mark. I'm very proud of you guys that are, are learning along with me, are writing down questions, your brain's working. This starts to feel a little bit complicated, then, then put your hand up or put it out there somewhere. The messages, wherever you need to, to let me know. So see, I'm starting to not understand where we're connected and we can go backwards. Absolutely, we can. We can go forward quicker if you're like, no, I already understand some of this stuff. Let's move on, let's move on. Put it in the comments. But definitely hit me a like and subscribe if you're on the YouTube. Makes a huge difference. If you're on the, the YouTube, that's how you're on YouTube if you're on our channel. Um, also, do some homework, do some drawings. Those are gonna get you a lot of points. If you are under 18, I definitely need you to make sure you have an adult or guardian that is with you if you are part of our groups that are learning out there. Now is the time to, to let me know if you need to make a trip out here, if we need to make a trip somewhere to you to do more of this kind of education for you or help you do a video. Who ate who? So we've answered that for today. I can eat, I can, I can, uh, I can, I can eat a scorpion if I want to. I'm not biting into this, but I can definitely finish this if I want to. So I can eat a scorpion. I'm probably not going to eat a tarantula. Are you going to eat a tarantula? Is a tarantula going to eat a scorpion? Okay, so these are some of your questions. And a tarantula hawk. Who is eating a tarantula hawk? I'm pretty sure there's no humans eating a tarantula hawk. But I'm not really sure what is out there, what creatures out there, who's flying around. Enjoy that. It's definitely the creepy season. Um, have a great